It's the Slated Podcast, they don't have any friends They pair a film with another film I don't watch cartoons because they're for children And they are both c***s, it's the Slated Podcast Hello everyone, welcome to episode 25, a quarter of a, of a century, can you believe it, of the Slated Double Features podcast with your hosts, Joshua Francisco Mitchell, and is, I think he's still fall, are you still falling, Matthew Vivian? Ah, uh, yeah, no, I'm still falling and I'm going to be falling the whole podcast because I fell out of a spaceship, <laughs> um, but I, I've got my <laughs> mic with me and I'm going to just make it work and hopefully I land um, uh, after we finish recording. That's great. That must be like the biggest dead cat in the world because I can't hear any wind oh, noise. It's lots, very, very furry. Yes. No, it's a lot of wind around <laughs> me. I can barely hear you. This week we're doing The Fall Guy uh, and and general action films. Uh, not action films featuring generals, though they may do. Um, just the general topic of action films. Well, I was going to say before we do that, there's a, a sort of bit of film news I just wanted to talk about. Have you seen Ooh. the picture of uh, the new Superman costume? I have seen the new Superman costume. What did you think? I've seen that everyone hates it. <laughs> I've seen um, I've seen people hate it for I've never seen a legitimate reason. Well, there's a couple of things about it that are a bit weird, but almost every criticism I've seen is people because it's just not Henry Cavill, and because it's not yeah. Zack Snyder. Um, yeah, which is weird because they were where were they when those films were coming out, and now they've come out of the woodwork like lice. I know, and they like, are every, like lice. Every single comment about it, every post about anything is just hashtag fire James Gunn, uh, restore <laughs> the side of us. It's like the side of us was shit. Let's just give him a go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like it. It looks a lot more. I think the Henry Cavill one looked more padded. Like it looked harder. Yeah, uh, well, this one I mean. it's got like it big more like an armor the creases and. But it, he did it say does. the picture's completely filmed on set, and normally there's a lot of like CGI costume replacements in superhero mm. movies. And anyway, I don't mind that because it makes it look like a real thing. Um, yeah, like he's actually wearing it, not like yeah. the Spider-Man costume. Because what I liked in Eternals was how their costumes had like they did have wrinkles in when they moved because they didn't replace yeah. them, and everything else it looks so so fake. Like Spider-Man yeah. costumes always look terrible. Uh, like oh Tom god, it's one. it's so um, sad. I hate it. So yeah, um, no, yeah, it's I nice. It. And he's got the underpants, which I like. I saw people, yeah, I saw people getting angry that like it doesn't fit him, that there are wrinkles around the shoulders and around the arms. But like you said, the more you move, it's going to fold in on itself. Yeah. Um, and and maybe this is him towards the start. Maybe he bulks out. Maybe he gets bigger. Maybe he, he fills in the suit. We maybe that's seen the that's film. a point. We haven't seen the film. Like, we say, haven't. Some people that saw that photo and were like, I can really tell it's going to be shit. And it's like, well, you've got a terrible foresight mm. then because there's no way you can tell from that. Yeah. And anyone listening to this in the future post Superman yeah. and you're laughing at us saying what stupid fools it looked stupid the entire time and James Gunn was then fired and shot for being bad Yeah, look at us laugh at us go on do yeah, it now do take it. a second and it's laugh fine. I just think James Gunn seems to understand Superman more than Zack Snyder ever did mm. um, from oh, all his completely. posts all his threads we could yeah. do a whole episode on how Zack Snyder doesn't understand Superman yeah exactly so uh, I look forward to it I like Zack Snyder I like just, um do you like uh, Zack Snyder? I like I like Zack Snyder as a fella. I just don't like his movies. Um, <laughs> I like James Gunn's movies. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We can run a yeehaw. Oh, God, sorry. I tried to do yeehaw, but I burped. Yeehaw. Are you just sick, you just sick in your mouth? Doing, no, but I am, I am feeling sick, and I, my throat's so sore from the stomach acid. So, um, no, but yeehaw. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> falling. And I, I'm not feeling too well because I'm falling. I'm getting a lot of air in my mouth. Right, seriously, this is a side note. This is going to be cut from the podcast. Do you need an ambulance right now? No, I'll be okay. Do you need an ambulance? I don't think you get one up there. Oh, that's true. You're falling. You're yeah, like you'd have to be an air. You'd have to be like a helicopter one. But I think I just get chopped <laughs> up on the blades. You're like Nathan Fielder in the end of The Curse. What have you seen? I watched. I went to the cinema. I watched a not a new film, an old film, but not that old. Mad Max Fury Road. I watched for the very first yeah. time in the cinema, and I loved it. I thought it was really good. Very good. I'm surprised that um, I was looking at box office. Didn't mm. do very well. No, I, I don't think it did. I think it's just one of these films where the, those who did watch it loved it, and so it got a lot of buzz about it. Um, but in fairness, the Mad Max franchise, like, I've actually... I've seen half the first movie, but I haven't seen the others. 
Um, but mm. I think they're very different to Fury Road. I think Fury Road is because it's more modern and they had more budget. Yes. And they, had, they could do more shit. I think they're very different. And I think yeah, I don't I don't think they were necessarily getting bums on seats from the Mad Max because of Mad Max. I haven't seen them before. I know a lot of people have only ever seen Fury Road. Mm. I think it's just because that specific movie is good. And also, you don't need to watch any of the others. According to Google, it made $380 million. And, like, you look at it and you think, that that was a billion-dollar film when it came out. Yeah. Very much not. But I liked it a lot. Um, and I'm looking forward to Furiosa. Mm. I, I, I do think it's a bit weird how... I don't think Tom Hardy's character even needed to be Max Rokotansky. Isn't it literally just because... I think it's just the marketing thing, because it's like, this is the franchise, so we have to put the name Mad Max in to sell tickets and so they made him mad max just for that but he doesn't there's no reason why he needs to be the same character as mel gibson was i yeah no i don't know either i know there was there was a theory when it came out that um tom hardy's actually playing one of the the little boys from thunderdome yeah dog boy or, or something like that um but that was disproved uh in the the prequel comics that it is in fact the same mad max yeah um but yeah and no, i completely understand i think it's more just because it's it's george miller's thing isn't it yeah it's it's like an established world that he can get into yeah i think it's basically it's kind of a reboot um but mm. like the, the event still happened but maybe slightly differently and everyone looks different and it just it's just don't worry about it i think the whole don't thing worry is about like it, yeah. it doesn't matter it's just a, a fun movie of people going down a road doing city stunts yeah and i loved it Crazy characters. I, I, I hated how woke it was um, because Furiosa uh, is actually a competent character and that's so woke it is. Max should be the only one. Yeah, it, when they when they, uh, when they their names first come on screen in the open titles, like both their names appear at the same time and it should yeah, just be Max. Yeah, that's so woke. It's not yeah. Mad Furiosa, is it? No, it's not. You and don't see any Furiosa movie, films, do you? Mad Max out of it. It's just Furiosa. Oh, God, it's so woke. Disgusting. <laughs> did you like it, though? What did you rate it? Uh, I think it was four and a half stars. I did like it. I That's thought very it was good. a good film. Uh, and I'm looking forward wow. to that Wow, goodness me, so am I. Very fun. Couple I do weeks. think it's one of these films where, although I hadn't seen it before, I'd seen so many clips and so many people just showing off stuff. It's always used as an example mm. in video essays about films. Oh, I'd completely. seen so much about it that it was like, I didn't know the plot, but mm. if, almost every scene I was like, yeah, I've seen this before. Yeah, and it's all it's all live action stunts. There's no CGI at all. None at all, no. Uh, which is amazing. Can I see a film? Because I've actually seen films. I watched Black Dynamite last night. Uh, I don't know him. It is a parody of seventies black exploitation crime films, nice. like low budget, uh, like very cheap. The film is based on an Adult Swim cartoon of the same name. Okay, but this is a live action. Yeah. film based on that based on the parody yeah um he ends up like the the climax is him having a nunchuck fight with with nixon in the white house nice um yeah <laughs> yeah it's nuts um and it's it's very similar to garth Marenghi. yeah uh in that it's all bad like it's all intentionally bad yeah like yeah. No, I love the, the lighting doesn't match up shot to shot there's obvious um, adr that is there yeah you'll see like a boom in shot yeah uh, that kind of thing um take continuity is is all over the shop they don't match up uh but it's it's really nice and i really enjoyed it it had some really funny moments um but i think it, it just went on for a bit too long that it kind of lost its is it sort of thing that's uh, better as a, as a adult swim short rather than a whole feature yeah or even even if it was a tv show and it was mm. released in like nine ten minute bits yeah yeah because i think kind of towards the end you're like okay i get it now and they weren't really doing enough to to mix it up whereas to that point they have been but yeah great i think they did really well kind of getting that 70s feel and Good. and some of it was very funny that sounds interesting no i might check that yeah. out i like the sound of that give it a three and a half wow um have you seen anything else love lies bleeding i would love to see that and i i think i will do soon tell me a bit about it but don't spoil it Ker- Ker- kristen kirsten stewart and katie o'brien they're both uh, female bodybuilders. I can't imagine Kristen Stewart as a bodybuilder. She's not she's, very big. She's a gym owner, but isn't like isn't like a proper muscle gal. Okay. I think she she like works out there, but isn't like fully bodybuilder. Because okay. Katie O'Brien's um, quite muscular. She's huge. She's yeah. massive in it. So Katie O'Brien uh, rocks up to town. She's a bit of a bit of a drifter. 
um, goes to the gym and Kristen Kirsten Stewart, uh, they hit it off and they, they fall in love and they need to overcome murder and Ed Harris and Dave Franco and Jenna Malone. They need to get over all of them to stay together, to stay in love and for Casey O'Brien to go to her bodybuilding show in Las Vegas. Wow. I might yes. check this out this afternoon. Very good. There are some like interesting surreal parts to it as well. It's a lot about addiction. Yeah. It's a lot about giving up and moving on or being stuck in one place. Story-wise, it's nothing that I haven't seen before, but I thought everything it does, it does really well. And I think the setting is really interesting. Yeah, there are some really interesting spins on what it does. It's very good. Nice. Um, yeah, four stars. Cool. Four, I'll, get, I'll check it out. Right, I've seen a couple more things. I wa- I've rewatched Fast and Furious 10. Fast X. Oh, no. Um, I mean, I watched it, I had it on while I was doing colour grading. Um, I think it's really, really fun. And I know you hate it, but I think it's a blast. I loved it. Big smile on my face. Who cares what the <laughs> plot is? It was just, I liked the silly set pieces. Uh, I liked it when they said family. And I just, like, <laughs> I liked the film. <laughs> And I thought it flew by. It's like about two and a half hours. It, I felt like it was less than an hour and a half. Honestly, I loved it. Can't wait for Fast and Furious 11. Um, uh, uh, it's, did they confirm that's the last one now? Well, they did. Fast 11. When, when, they, when 10 was announced, it was like 10 part one and 10 part two. And then I think when it came out, Vin Diesel was like, I'd quite like to do two more instead. So we don't really know uh, if they are going to do two more or one more. Um, but I hate how people are constantly like, oh, stop making Fast and Furious movies and start ma- and make these movies instead. It's like, no, don't stop making them. I'm watching them. You still make them. <laughs> make them forever. And I'll always keep watching them. But you guys who don't like them, don't you watch them. You lose it. <laughs> stop watching them if you don't like them. Stop moaning about them. I enjoy them. I'm, I'm going to stop watching it because I'm part of the group that I wish they stop. <laughs> like, no. Please stop. I Put money elsewhere. Time. No, just use, just stop. No, don't. Get more money. <laughs> I then watched iRobot, uh, which is all ah. right. It's, it's decent. With famous physical abuser Will, William Smith. Oh, is he? Oh, with Chris Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Classic. I Feels like I a lifetime watching, ago. I watched that live. Um, yeah, no, he, um, yeah, I, I think he's the wrong lead for the movie. I think he's, because he's not a character, he's Will Smith, which I think is... Something yeah, I never yeah. like in movies when there's is not a character, it's a star. And Shia LaBeouf plays his friend for some reason. That's very weird. Oh, yeah, forgot about that. Um, Alan Tudyk played the robot, didn't he? What's yeah, the he robot? Does. Sammy? Is that his name? Uh, K2S. Sunny. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, he plays exactly the same character as he does in Star Wars Rogue One. Um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting. Sunny. It, it was. I knew exactly where the movie was going to go. Um, mm. The CGI is awful, but you kind of get used to it. Um, and they're like artificial, so I guess it kind of thematically is all right. Uh, but yeah, it's strange. And the product placement is so, so, so obvious. Like right at the start, he walks into his uh, flat with his nan, I think. And uh, and she's oh, like, God, yeah. what are you wearing on your feet? And he's like, these are uh, these are vintage 2004 uh, Converse all stars. <laughs> And it's like, oh, God, it's so bad. <laughs> but I think overall, the, f- the film's fine, but I've seen the exact same commentary done in other better films. It's interesting. It, it's based on a, an Asimov book, isn't it? it, it it's I, ba- Robot. I don't think it's Asimov, wasn't it? Um, a, yeah, it is Asimov. It's a fix-up yeah. collection made up of science fiction short stories yeah. made by Isaac, Isaac Asimov. Asimov. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I've never read them myself, so I, I couldn't possibly say. No, I'm guessing it's a fair bit different, because I can't imagine... Mm in 1950 Will Smith was being written the way that he is in this film uh, but it, it was interesting I, I thought he's like obviously they have to do like oh the, the main guy hates robots because of his experience in the past but I did think that was quite interesting how it wasn't because like anyone left him to die it's because they saved him rather than saving a little girl which means he's like yeah, fuck you you should yeah. yeah they need to change the rules but no it's fine it's two and a half stars I... Yeah, it, I, I, I've seen it a couple of times. You know, it's one of those films that's that's kind of always on. Mm. Um, but, like, honestly, this should be the topic for the next Star Wars trilogy. I don't know why they haven't done... I know they've done, like, the, the Separatist versus the uh, the Republic in yeah. the prequels, they've but never... that was all, like, like a pre-controlled war. Yeah. So there wasn't... There weren't really sides fighting. It was no. all for the Emperor. But, I don't know why they haven't done... the droids. 
droids not being slaves anymore. Yeah, because they I never... think that's such an interesting thing. Well, they never really... They very rare. They do in Solo a little bit, but they rarely addru- address... Yeah. and it's like, a joke in Solo. It is, yeah. They rarely sort of address um, the uh, sentience of, of droids. I think it's generally considered like, yeah, they're alive, but they don't matter, basically. Which, which is nuts. Which is nuts. <laughs> and even like like goody characters will treat droids like shit, and it's considered yeah. fine. Um, so, yeah, I think that would be an interesting thing to do properly. It was just the fact that like when they did it, in solo it was like um it was a bit sort of people were like oh it's just feminist woke nonsense bashing over the head <laughs> oh equal rights shut up <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what you sent me you're just reading out your your text yeah. after solo <laughs> i do i like that bit where she freed the um the droids on uh kessel kessel yeah and then she got trapped forever in the millennium falcon yeah and now exactly cannot what escape she invented, yeah <laughs> She can now no longer communicate. She can just sit there and think for the rest of eternity. Great. Lucky her. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's everything I've watched. Oh, cool. Nice. I think Thank you, is. William Smith. Well, I've also watched The Fall Guy. Maybe we should talk about The Fall Guy in more detail. That sounds like a good idea to me. This week, we saw David Leach's new action comedy romance film, The Fall Guy. Matt, what's the plot? The plot is stuntman, right, cam op. They are a romantic thing. They're flirting, whatever. Anyway, the stuntman is injured in a stunt uh, and he just sort of goes off the deep end. He's in a bit of a rut. He can't work anymore. And he sort of, they break up. And uh, anyway, 18 months later, the cam op is now a director. And, um, and the stunt guy gets a call saying, we specifically want you to work on this new film. Come along to Australia and we'll film it. And they get there and... The director is like, I didn't want him there. Who got him there? And he's like, <laughs> well, if you don't want me there, I won't be here. And then they slowly sort of like fall back in love. And it's like a rom-com, but with action. Oh, there's also Cute. like some like crime stuff going on. That's like... Yeah, there is, there's crime stuff. There's crime. The fourth genre in this film. What did you think? What are the first first thoughts that come to mind uh, after watching The Fall Guy? I liked it. Um, but I will say, of so we, as you mentioned, four genres. we got the comedy. We've got the action, and we've got the romance, and we've got the yes. crime. Crime, the crime didn't give a shit about. Get rid of that. No. Um, yeah. I thought the comedy wasn't particularly funny. In fact, I actually can't think of a single joke. I laughed once, and it was um, one of the later trailers for The Fool Guy. I don't know if you saw it in cinemas, where it's, it's one of the trailers where it will say big bold text in the screen, like comedy, and then it will show a clip of yeah. of the comedy in the film. And then it go action, and then a clip of the action. Yeah, and it does that, and progressively gets faster and faster. I don't even remember. Do- I don't remember seeing that. It. I've only seen it once. Um, it gets faster and faster, and then one of them is big bold text minerals, and then it's a clip of Aaron Taylor Johnson saying minerals, and then it just moves <laughs> on. That's that's, <laughs> that's the only okay, thing we laugh. That great trailer. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'd agree. I'd agree. It's it's more light hearted than funny. Yeah, I think the, I think the so. comedy. Yeah. But yeah, I liked the sort of romance. I was invested in their romance, although I, I knew exactly how it was going to go because it's so paint by numbers. Um, yeah. And I thought the action was good. I mean, should we talk, let's talk about the characters. So Ryan Gosling plays Ken. He Ryan Gosling plays Ken, yeah. He loved playing Ken in the, in the Barbie movie. But unfortunately, that's one movie. That's not a TV show, so he can't play the character <laughs> anymore. And so he's done what happens so often with actors where he just continues playing the character even though it's a completely different script and a completely different name (laughs) and he's not a a a mannequin in real life a doll um yeah he just plays ken which i love to see because i loved ken but it's sort of like i hope he doesn't keep up doing this forever because i don't want it like ryan reynolds just plays deadpool and everything and i like deadpool but you can do other stuff ryan he came out and said that He's not going to be taking those harder roles as regularly now uh, like st- for family reasons. Stuff. Um, like, I think like Drive or Blade Runner, where you where he previously oh. had to really get into the mindset of it and it would impact home life. So now he said he's, he's aiming more for these kind of roles oh, okay. that are more lighthearted and more fun that he can enjoy. Fair enough. Um, so expect to see Ken for the rest of time. Great. Um, yeah, no, I'd agree. And I think I feel so sorry for, for women in film, like genuinely. Because Emily Blunt is a great actor. She and is. if if she wasn't the female lead in this, like the chemistry wouldn't have worked. Yeah, I agree. But 
She almost exclusively plays female the, the, love interest. She plays. I was going to say that. I'm going to get up. Oh my god! I'm going to look her up on Letterbox because it will say in order of like famousness of her films. Because I was thinking exactly like that. She plays. She's such a great actor. She plays the the, the girlfriend or the wife in everything. So Oppenheimer, she plays the wife. Devil Wears Prada, she actually is a character. She's like the villain. Um, Good. A Quiet Place, she's the wife, but she also is one of the joint leads. And in Quiet Place Part Two, she is the lead. Sicario, I haven't seen. I don't think she is a wife. Age of Tomorrow, the she's the love interest. Looper, she's the wife. I don't remember she's her in the that wife. Looper, but she's the wife. As much as I like that film, Fall Guy, Girlfriend, Jungle Cruise, she's basically she's the, wife the wife to the rock. The, yeah. yeah. The Muppets. I don't remember her in The Muppets. It was probably a one-line cameo. Into She's the Miss Woods. Piggy's receptionist. <laughs> oh, of course she is. Yeah. Into the Woods, I... James I'm Corden's s- wife. Yeah. The Girl on the Train, uh, Mary Poppins Returns. She is actually the lead. She's not romantic. And Nomeo and Juliet. She's, she plays Juliet. She plays Juliet. And now we're at the point where I haven't really seen these films. So uh, that's it. I think she is wasted a lot of the time. But great in this. Great in this. I think she's she's a great performer, but it it's so much harder to break out of that that remit. Mm. Essentially, if you're not a Hollywood leading man, then you're being cast in the same role. Yeah. Uh, like the only the only actors that come to mind that break out of that are like you have to be best of the best female actors. Yeah. Like Emma Stone, Meryl Streep. Like you're yeah. being given roles that that you shouldn't be given, but you're that good. But I still You've feel like broken out of that mold. I feel like Meryl Streep is still like a classy older lady and everything. She never plays like a disgusting hag. Actually, in Und- Into the Woods, isn't she? The- she did, she yeah. Might be a hag yeah. In that. But in everything else, she's like she is still fairly. There's a Meryl Streep role definitely, whereas Emma Stone will do anything. But yeah, no, I, I, I yeah. get what you're saying. I think uh, I think Emily Blunt's great. David Leach, director. I um, I like his direction. I mean, he only does comedy. Uh, comedy action films because he yes. used to be a stuntman he was uh, he, I mean he did loads and loads of stunt work but uh, one of the most famous things is he was uh, Keanu Reeves stunt double on The Matrix uh, and then him and Chad Stahelski directed John Wick who, Chad Stahelski mm. was another one of uh, Keanu Reeves stunt doubles and they made John Wick together David Leach isn't credited but he is one of the he co-wrote, co-directed the first film but it's because of Directors Guild of America stuff it, yeah, don't yeah, Chad yeah. and then after that he did uh, Atomic Blonde and he did Deadpool 2 and Bullet Train. Bullet Train. And now this. I haven't seen Bullet Train, but I've heard people say it's it's a lot better than it, it has any right to be. Because when yeah. I saw the trailer, yeah, I was there like, that some, looks there terrible. Some good moments. Yeah, I mean, what I loved most is that it's made by someone who clearly has onset experience and understands mm. the world. It's not like some Nazi director from film school who's gone, oh yeah, I've done a day on a set. Let me just do a set film. No, he's like, good a at, lot of, he knows the other uh, departments and he knows. He does, yeah. yeah. A lot of what happened, you're like, you're doing the Leo point. You're like, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Um, mostly very accurate, but we'll go into that in more detail very shortly. Yeah. A lot of very stylized sequences, like the nightclub bit was very stylized, which it isn't in the trailer. Yeah. Um, which I thought was interesting. And the stunt work. I don't know if you sat through the credits and saw yeah. all of the behind the scenes I stuff. I loved that. Yeah, because, I mean, well, not so much anymore, but doing a bloopers reel over the credits of a comedy movie was such a, yeah. it's like a common thing, or was. Like, I think the idea of doing a stunt reel over an action movie, what a great, especially great this, it, it suits this movie specifically so well. What a great idea. And it was, yeah. I, just thought, I thought it was so interesting to watch. With it being so stunt heavy and stunt focused, it's a shame they didn't have more of the, I guess it doesn't doesn't fit the style, the the John Wick just locked off camera, let the stunt happen. Because I know one of the big criticisms was that it looks like a lot... There, there are a lot of cuts, and it makes a lot of the stunts look fake. Yes. Um, um, but then you see in the blooper reel, like the, the one where they're being dragged in that skip that's spinning. Yeah. Like, that I actually thought, happened. Yes. That's kind of my problem, is that, that scene, they added loads of, like, CGI sparks, and I think it made the whole thing... I don't. I think there might be more to it than that, but that is one of the reasons why I think that looked fake, and I just assumed it was all on a green screen because it looked that way. Yeah. And so the yeah. fact they did it for real, I think my the fakeness of those sparks that triggered my brain to say this shot is fake, and mm. so it, it was. It's like um, in Mission Impossible, that um, that skydiving scene they did in the one with Henry Cavill was that Fallout. 
they did it for real. They they came up with skydiving. Tom Cruise was skydiving. A different man with his windscreen wiper, with his helmet steamed up so he could see it wasn't Henry <laughs> Cavill was skydiving. And um, but they added loads of like CGI storm clouds, and it's like, well, yeah. you might as well have just done the whole thing in CGI then. And I think that's sort of similar to what that was like. I think I like it when they paint out wires, but kind of keep as much real as possible. But never mind. Yeah. Also. How you were saying about all these cuts and that. They even talk about in this movie how stunt doubles always have to face away from the camera. They, I kind of was hoping in this they would then do the stunts more real and we would see that it's Ryan Gosling. But there were a lot of times where it was clearly a stunt double in exactly the... And it was filmed like a stunt, even though yeah. the film had made us aware of how we film stunts to seem like a stunt. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was also stuff where they did like linger on a shot. You know that when they beat the world record for the most uh, car flips for this on the beach. Film, on the beach, yeah, they they yeah. kept they kept on that for a long time because mm. they wanted to show off like, look, we did this. Oh, definitely a, f- a missed opportunity. They should have done a a plot twist based around the Texas switch. I think that would have been really cool. I think that would have been cool. Uh, I yeah. actually thought there was going to be a when she famous was- stunt. Thing. I thought when the, you know when she was doing that that wanna um because the main actor doesn't show up to work I thought they were gonna yeah. she was gonna be like you know you do the stunts and then we'll have the Texas switch right at the end and the st- actor yeah. comes out and says the line sort of thing but um yeah no that would have been really interesting if they, if they did more stuff based on stunts because I loved how the gasoline bit I really liked yeah before we get we go into that with more detail um I had a couple of issues with this yeah. The action was very good and I enjoyed the stunts, but for an action comedy, the time between set pieces were way too long. Yeah. And some of the dialogue was way too long and boring and you could have cut like half an hour worth I mean, there of, was, of dialogue from this. There was a couple of scenes of like Emily Blunt saying about how she feels in their relationship, but she's actually talking about... Well, she's she's actually talking about that, but she it seems as if she's talking about yeah. uh, the film and the aliens, like and the, the, cowboys. the split screen conversation. Yeah, so they already did yes. they already did that when they first meet up again, when she's directing him, and the subtext is that she's talking about the relationship, um, and then they do that again in that split screen one, and it's yeah. sort of like, well, we've done this scene now. I get what you mean. Yeah, I think it could have been cut, and I wish it was just a bit more snappy. Yeah. That's that's what kind of really lets it down. I did um, think, yeah, it sagged a little bit. But it's only 126 minutes. Uh, but maybe it should have been more of a 90-minute one. I think so. I think so. I think it should have been just a nice, tight film. Um, a lot of that should have been left on the on the cutting room floor. Mm. But, yeah, other than that, I thought there were great performances. Okay, have you got have you got any issues before we go into... I thought the characters were a bit thin... I thought Emily Blunt, I don't know who she... Because we basically focus on Ryan Reynolds as the lead and then she's the girlfriend. It's not like a joint uh, rom-com where they're both equal leads. Um, yeah. And so she was sort of, there was sort of nothing to her other than... Because she plays wife. She plays wife. Yeah. Well, she was. she's now a director and her dream is to direct June, And that's his motivation June, for doing but this. but also just... Fast and Furious. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, Mad Max. Or Mad Max, yeah. It was Mad Max. Yeah. Which is... I feel like it, sometimes... was, it was Mad Max and then they've just put... Oh, wait, June 2 was really popular. Put the June put music, the music over in. it. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, but the problem is, they there's some scenes it seems like the movie's bad and they're taking the piss out of it, it's bad. They're talking about, like, oh, Space Cowboy and all this and, and Jason Momoa is hamming it up at the end. Like, I think sometimes they're trying to make it out to be bad and sometimes they're trying to make it out to be good. And mm. I don't know which one it's meant to be. But if her whole thing is she's a director and she doesn't want to fuck this up and this is a big thing for her, why are they making the movie out to be bad? It should be good. Um... Yeah, and we don't know anything about her yeah. other than she wants to direct this movie. And then whenever Ryan Gosling gets in the way, she's like, "Oh fuck the movie! I only care about you." Which is weird. It is weird. Yeah, it does get a bit muddy towards the end. But yeah, no, I think that's that's all valid. Do you, do you want to go into spoilers and talk about that that little bit you want to talk about? Let's do it. Go for it. Spoilers. Um, I thought the bit where they were pouring the gasoline on him and then he got some in his mouth and then they got the lighter out and he spat it on the lighter and blew and um, set them on fire was sick. <laughs> because that's what stuntmen do. They do fire blows with gasoline in their mouth. And I thought that was cool how they did like a, a common stunt thing. He did that, use that as the way to get out of um, a real life fight. And I think they, I wish they did sort of more more of that. I mean, they certainly, uh, I don't know if it's just me inferring it for they actually comment, but like when he gets hit by a car, like he can, he knows how to take hits. So he can sort of yeah. roll in the right way and he can 
he can survive it and be a lot more intact than a normal person would. What did you think about the the drug sequence? Actually, I thought it was a waste of time. So did I. I like the the fight the unicorn joke in in the trailer looked looked pretty cool. Like him throwing the cork. That's that's like a big part of the trailer. Yeah. But in the film, it's all like glittery and and it, I think it just it takes away from the stunt again. Yeah, I, I think it's just a film I don't have very much to talk about, but I did mostly enjoy it. I thought the villain motivation was like, it was paper thin, but it because he just wanted to kill off his stunt doubles because he was jealous that... No, his stunt doubles were... were he, he says, I do my, all my own stunts, which is what actors say, and it's not true. And I think that was a, a good sort of dig at actors that David Leach mm. did there. Um, he said, I do all my own stunts, and then his stunt man was like called him out on it and then he was his ego being an actor really yeah, killed him. yeah and i thought that worked quite well as like a it's already quite a silly movie so i think it worked well as the motivation uh, but that's yeah, all there I really is that to the it. um the villains were actors and producers <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah yeah it's not really it's not really much else i don't think i don't think so some some funny moments some good stunts it should have gone either way it should have gone full john wick and and really lent in with the stunts and the action um, with a, a like the thin plot it has, or flesh out the plot a bit more, like spend those back and forth conversations that you've had so many of between Blunt and Goslin, and yeah. flesh out motivations and un- understand, get some more characterization going, yeah, rather I mean, than it just being plot driven the entire way. Probably my biggest criticism, which I think is a shame, is how they should have had like a stuntman actor play the lead. Now, obviously, Ryan Goslin does do some stunts. But, you know, a Jackie Chan type should have done mm. it. But we don't really have those actors. Not in, like, America. A Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise? Yeah. Yeah. But he's too old. See, we don't have... There's no one who is the right age who is, like, American who could have done that part. They don't need mm. to be American, I guess. But um, they could have got, like, a like a Japanese person or something. But, and that's kind of the only shame for me is I think it would have been so much more powerful if we clearly saw him do all the stunts. And it was obviously yeah. him. Uh, I could have done it. Yeah. I just think this would have been a good Jackie Chan movie. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. You imagine it from like the the 90s, like mm. police, um, what, what's his film? Police story. Police, it's police story. Is that what Like it is? that kind of vibe, like drunken master. Yeah, well, because he does more like comedy action stuff. I think he'd be great at yeah. it. Yeah. And, and maybe that's it. Maybe that's what would have really worked is, is working in the comedy more to the action. Yeah. Like that Jackie Chan style stunt would have been great and it would have been consistent all the way through rather than feeling like action scene dialogue with some jokes action scene dialogue with some jokes yeah I, yeah I, I yeah think no honestly, i think you're like, right i think you've hit the nail on the head there i think sometimes it's just when you see a stunt double it's much the same as when you see cgi in an action sequence and it's like okay well i'm not watching this character anymore when i see yeah. black panther fight i'm like i'm watching pixels i'm watching a computer i'm watching Chad computer. Bozeman's at home like so it doesn't feel like it's the same character. It doesn't feel like the stakes are there. So sometimes when yeah. I do see like, oh, now he's turned his head away and it's from a big wide shot. This isn't the character I've been following. Mm. It almost means nothing. And I think that's part of why I really liked RRR, which we'll talk about a bit more later, because it's always the actors and you can clearly see their faces the whole time. Yeah. And it, you're there with the, with the characters as they go. Mm. And the stunts mean something in to the story. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. That's my only criticism is I think they they should have yeah. got an actor who could do more. But he does do some. And anyone at home who's interested in that, I would say go on go on to YouTube and try and find Edgar Wright talking about a Texas switch because yeah. that is a great way of keeping like maintaining a shot and maintaining tension and tricking the audience into thinking that the actor is doing it all. Like yeah. there's no cutting and there's it's all done in camera. So it feels organic and it feels real, and and you're you're shocked that mm. it's not actor doing it. It's it's so amazing, a, such a great technique. It is a great, very silly, very unbelievable one. Like you you can recognise the Texas switch. Anyone can, but that one in Scott Pilgrim when he jumps out the window. Yeah, that is like it's <laughs> yeah. obviously a Texas switch. It's not fooling yeah. anyone, but it's really it's. But that's that's the joke. It works or, really well. I think about a lot of the driving in Baby Driver. Like yeah. if you listen to the audio commentary, you'll be like, "Oh, that was a Texas switch." Yeah. And you're like, oh, what? Mm. Like it's it's crazy. Really well done. Um. So yeah, the full guy. Uh, I gave it three and a half. So did I. Amazing news. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
That was was that your own stunt, or did you get a stunt double in to do that? Oh, that was a double. I could do that. This week on ADs React, we look at the Full Guy by David Leach with your two favourite ADs, Matthew Vivian and Joshua Mitchell. Hello, Matt. Hello. This is everyone's favourite um, returning segment yep. where we look at a film that is set on a film set and we're gonna we're gonna dissect it we're gonna see how true to life it actually is if you've seen vfx or stunts react it's that but worse welcome everyone generally i think they did a good job i think they did a great job I yeah mean, it's obviously a comedy so stuff has to be really heightened there's things where it's like well their first ad they had be a bit of a pussy so that he would they could just ignore him when yeah. he was like guys you really need to hurry up so i'm not sure someone like that would ever be firsting such a big film Especially with an inexperienced director. Yeah, but he I liked was there. how he, he was switched a lot. Like when speaking to the director, it was it was very fluffy and yeah. conversational. And then, and the then comes in. like when the stunts was going off, he was oh, like, yeah. "I'm going to kill you if you don't stop these stunts right now." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. Um, so that you get first like that. Um, yeah, you do. You get some real bruises, which is a shame. Uh, a lot of radio usage, like in the first scene, um, yeah. you see people on radio. You even hear a. Switch to two for a bit of private chat. Oh, I didn't catch that. Because I was yeah. thinking, like, when they were talking on the radio but about really personal stuff, I was like, so are they on, like, yeah. Channel 10 or whatever stunts is, is being? And But I was like, surely there'll be someone... There's always some knobhead who's like, keep personal chat off Channel 10. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, uh, standard in, in the industry, you have a radio with separate channels, and each department has their own channel. Uh, channel 1 is the AD channel, or, like... The, the public channel, if you want to know what's going on. Um, channel 2 is a private channel. So if if Channel 1 is just for the first AD uh, and I needed to speak to Matt across set about something, I would say, Matt, switch to 2. And we would then switch to the private and channel say, and we would chat shit on yeah, 2. Do you want me to get you a coffee? Yeah, and okay. then we'd go back on 1 and we'd switch <laughs> back to 1. Um, so that happens. Um, I think Ryan Gosling says to Emily Blunt, um, on two or switch to two mm. so they switch to two and then they have that heart to heart however emily blunt although brian gosling probably would be on one to get called if needed emily blunt uh would not be on one she would be on camera channel i mean they might have two radios possibly a couple of people in a department but yes she would be on camera channel that's a good point but but they could still go from maybe you're assuming they started off on one Maybe they started off on like four or five or whatever cameras. And oh, then, true. Yeah, very true. They, they could have been on ten and switched to two. Yeah. Yeah, because then they could have had. Yeah, because otherwise the DP and and all that would be like shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Sitting around monitors, all, all that looked, shit. Yeah, what all else? The monitors, the video village and stuff all looked very realistic. You got the producers and and the actors sat there watching, criticizing, yeah. saying they need to go again. That sounds about right to me. Yeah. <laughs> Actors trying to influence the way things are because they want to just look better. They don't care about the overall thing. They just want to look better and they think that's more important than anything. I kind of assume that with the essays, they said, this is your role, this is your role, this is who you're playing. But we yeah. just never really pay much attention yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We probably should have had a look and pause and see if, see if we could see like a script supervisor and script supervisor's assistant. And Oh, so you do see that on the beach. You get people going up to Emily Blunt to show how overwhelmed she is. Yeah. And one of them is the, the VFX person, I think. Yeah, yeah, I remember the VFX uh, supervisor being there. And one of them is the scripty. Mm. So on set, you get a script supervisor um, who is checking through the lines and making notes about best takes, what was dropped. And continuity um, too. What needs to be picked up, continuity. Yeah. Um, and maybe it was the scripty or the writer went up to Emily Blunt and said something like, I've been having to think about the third act issues. Why don't we just have one of the uh, characters say we're having third act issues and be really meta about it? Mm. And Emily Blunt is like, mm, no chance. Yeah. <laughs> Another accurate part uh, was the sound team. You get one of assistant sound popping up a couple of times. Really interesting. I'd, I've only seen it and kind of briefly spoken to the sound team about it. I don't know if you know more about it. Um, but in the climax when they have miked Aaron Taylor Johnson and they're trying to get a confession from him, the assistant sound goes up to the microphone and plays like the little tune from his phone. The little beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Uh, which, to my understanding, switches the microphone off and on. Oh, I didn't know that. So he did that to turn the microphone on to make sure it was still working before Aaron Taylor Johnson then got in the car. Oh, that's clever. Yes. 
very cool and you even see the mixer i think it's the same same character actually but then the mixer in his van mm. watching the monitors and and doing the levels and things that was quite cool because that's like the ending of the movie it's like um oh we caught yeah. it because he's like what you're wearing a wire and he's like no you are because actors do sometimes <laughs> forget they're wearing uh, they're wearing microphones. But to be fair, the sound team it's like one of the main things they do for like privacy is they do as soon as someone starts saying like um, just chatting to people like between takes they will turn their mics down. When when first joining the industry, uh, our first big job was hijack. I was terrified that I was going to be seen on camera doing something that I shouldn't, mm. or I would be heard saying something that I shouldn't. And yeah. I like I would get home and I would wake up in the middle of the night panicking that I was I said something or like in such a weird state it was so bizarre that feeling of of always kind of being watched and being listened yeah, to because even with the boom they can just point it they're so directional you can point and hear someone yeah. at the other end of the room like so clearly it's really you don't think really about weird the sound guys, though. you really don't and so no. I think that's why it worked so well as a twist because you do yeah. just simply forget about it you do, you do. Especially when uh, a camera will be taken off of a, a rig and just laid on the side. Yeah. And then it will just be looking at the crew, which is being shown on all of the monitors. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you don't want to trip and fall and cover yourself in coffee because then everyone has seen that. Yeah, yeah. And obviously that's how your allegations came around, wasn't it? Being yeah. seen on, on that kind of monitor. Mm, well, um, they, were still reco- they were still recording, yeah. Because they said go yeah, again uh, and then they ended up faffing around for a little bit. Um yeah. And yeah. Alleged, alleged, wasn't it? It's all alleged. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Well, it was all caught on Channel One as well. Yes, and but alleged, alleged. Yeah, and yeah. everyone's mics were on. But this is all completely alleged. It's all alleged. Yeah. yeah, alleged. I I thought it was very very accurate. And I know looking at all the film meme pages, they're all about look doing the Leo point. I I recognise that from set. Mm. Um, yeah, very good uh, in terms of accuracy, and also quite a good film. Uh, it's out now. If you want to go and watch it. Yeah, I think you should. I we re- I really liked it. I thought it was good. Um, you liked it. Three and a half stars. I liked it. Give it a yeah, go. great. Okay, so out in cinemas right now is The Fall Guy, which is about a stuntman on set, and there's uh, some great action. It's directed by a former um, stunt double, stunt, stunt coordinator. Um, so we wanted to talk about stu- um, action movies and stunts in other movies and what we think is interesting, what we think isn't, and the different types of action movies. So obviously you've got more grounded stuff and you've got more ridiculous stuff. Yeah. And we just wanted to talk about, um, about action movies, about all the different types. I think we'll, we'll mostly use a few examples. So I think I we're going so. to talk about... I'm going to give you a movie and you give it a quick synopsis oh just so God. people okay. at home. But I'll just... I'll mention a few and you just do a sentence, okay? Oh my God, okay. The pressure. RRR. Um, set in India and it's about two guys saving the Indian people against the evil British Empire. Correct. Thank um, you. The Fast and Furious franchise. Ah, oh, bad and cars. Incorrect. Good and cars. <laughs> um... <laughs> uh, John Wick, we can talk about him. John Wick, um, he he's from Fortnite, isn't he? He's a Fortnite character and he has a yeah. gun um, and he kills loads of people, including Theon Greyjoy, because of a puppy. He does, that's in the first movie, the only one I've seen. What's like grounded action? So Daredevil, I'll put the Daredevil bit Dead. there. Daredevil, yeah. Um, so Full Guy was was kind of based in, in the reality of stunts, wasn't it? That's what it was about. There was a lot yeah. of taking hits and feeling the hits and getting back up. It reminded me a lot of the stunts in Daredevil, the TV show. Although Daredevil was more like John Wick akin, I would say, where like the famous hallway stunt scene where it's it's him. I don't know if you've seen it, him entering and then you've got like four there's rooms on either side. There. Yeah, there's there's one on the stairs. Yeah. Um, and you get guys coming out and fighting Daredevil as the camera like slowly pulls back one yeah. take and Daredevil will, like hit a guy and the guy will will collapse and then he'll get back up again because dead yeah. was just a man so yeah. although he's he has these reflexes and this agility and all this stuff by the end of it he's only taken down like five guys yeah. but he is he's so beaten up he's so hurt but he has to keep going well that's the way it always is in movies like you they hit a baddie once and then that baddie's unconscious until after the scene's ended yeah and that's not very realistic like I know, I know a lot of that kind of vibe happened in this, being realistic. Like Ryan Gosling would take a hit and then would acknowledge that he's taken a hit. Yeah. And a lot of the fights were were extended. It wasn't just him against fifty Agent Smiths, all taking yeah. a hit to die. It was kind of 
choreographed longer fights um so that was quite cool that was, that was interesting rrr i know that's one that you want to talk about so tell me about the stunts in rrr okay so i think rrr has the best stunts and best action i've ever seen by wow. a long way i actually think for, for, for the first reason i don't mind if if a stunt isn't realistic in fact i i like uh, my least favorite type of movies uh, and for, and TV shows are kitchen sink dramas like EastEnders and Coronation Street. All these British soaps. I don't want to fucking watch that <laughs> because there's people I know in real life who are like that. Like you know, I could just if I want these stories, I'll just talk to people. This isn't interesting because <laughs> I'll I just could, go to work. It's just life. Uh, I want to see from the movies stuff that's not life. I want escapism. I want to see stuff which is I- impossible for me to see outside of a film. And so I like it when action is like, yeah, okay. So it's the coincidence is like a million to one that they would survive that. But that's fine because this is not real. So we, it can be in that universe where they survive every stunt. And so I like how things are big and RRR is as big as can be. You it's not grounded in reality. It's just, it's all emotion driven. It's not, meant to be grounded they don't care about gravity or strength it's just ridiculous uh but i think it's so so watchable and it's so creative um all every shot is like it's from like an anime or from a you know it's all it's yeah. a painting every it's shot all wire is work isn't it yeah loads and loads of wire work and i think what's so great is that they don't have stunt doubles their mm. ss rajamouli the director says there's two or three shots the whole movie where they have stunt doubles and i believe that because you can see their faces clearly in every yeah. shot yeah. it's so obviously them there's no never turning away like in every american movie a stunt happens and suddenly the actor is facing away from the camera and they're a different size and it's a big wide shot and it's so fast <laughs> Uh, these these are like lo- lots of slow motion, long slow motion, uh, crazy insane wire work. In fact, there's a lot of good speed ramping too. They're speeding up and slowing down, which I think works yeah. really well for yeah, some of yeah, the hits. Yeah. I think it, it does so well. And and now what I think I I think is the most effective about RRR's action and why I think it's the best I've ever seen is because not because of the spectacle, not because of the impressive things that they did on set, but because of the writing. Because most action scenes you see is a goodie and some nameless henchman fighting mm. because uh, I mean take like you know often the goodie is, is doing what they do because it's their job they're a policeman say and the baddies are doing what they're doing because they're being paid for it and there's no stakes really other than I need to defeat you and you defeat me this is yeah. like what's so good about RRR is their entire lives are dedicated towards their cause their individual courses their personal and so it's like anytime there's a fight scene it's i have to i have to win i have to defeat you because my entire life is building up to this and my whole reason for living my whole goal my goals <laughs> it's it's so so personal every single fight scene and i th- i think in in writing interesting characters are ones who care about their cause more than anything i think yeah. you know which us as it, an audience then care about their cause yeah i mean you take like a, the lowest stakes movie would be like um, a high school rom-com the goal is to ask the hot girl to prom now that's the lowest stakes possible but you have to make out like this is so important this has to happen yeah. and th- th- that, that that's what you have to do you have to make it so that the character would never be like oh she's not interested I'll give up then and I'll I'll yeah. give up with someone else like, yeah they have to be have tenacious to make, it has to be we are I'm absolutely in love it has we, we have to do this um and we, if we don't do it now, there'll be no other time to. And it has, to, you know, they have to be, yeah, they have to be tenacious. And I think, I think that's what is good about action when the characters care, when they have to fight to survive to yeah. for their own livelihood, for their own yeah. people. John Wick is the other end of the spectrum in that you have a main character that doesn't want to do what he is doing, and because of of the nature of the films, it's so thin on plot that it doesn't rely on any any like character stakes nothing like that it is just action scene to action scene that is what drives it forward it is pure action is like pure quote-unquote realism with a camera watching a scene unfold um there aren't cuts it's not like 20 cuts watching uh nicholas cage jumping over a fence it is a a single um, shot minimal um, cut liam neeson Liam Neeson jumping over a fence. Yeah. Yeah. And and how many have there been now? Three, four? 
Four. Uh, and they just they build and build and build, and they're they're all incredible. Like the the scenes in them are, are all incredible. I've only seen the first one, but they they're directed by Chad Stahelski, who was a stunt man and then a stunt coordinator, mm. um, stunt director, like. So I think he's the perfect person to direct an action film. And I think so many times action films... I mean, look at the MCU, and they actually... The directors don't even do the action films. They're all action scenes. They've already been started on pre previs before yeah. they even hired a director. That's what I've heard Marvel directors... I can't remember who it was who said, like, in the interview, they were, like, nervous. They are like, I don't know how to direct action, though. And Kevin Feige's like, don't worry, we, we do that stuff. We just do the <laughs> dialogue scenes. Um, which isn't great. It's actually terrible. as an awful way of working. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think the idea of having a stuntman, stunt coordinator direct an action movie is brilliant. And it really pays Great up. idea. Yeah, great idea. I think there's... It's a number four. Uh, have you seen the Staircase action scene? So I thought people say four's the best one, though. Four is great. Four is really good. Um, so I think the, the... He needs to reach this certain point in Paris before sunrise or something like that um in order to challenge bill skarsgård to a duel some something okay. like that something contrived and bill skarsgård being being a ne'er-do-well has sent all of his goons off to stop john wick from reaching this meeting point at this time okay so there's a scene where john wick has to climb a flight of stairs to get to the top but there are like tens of guys so he he's like struggling and fighting all the way to the top to beat these guys, and then he gets kicked, and then he gets sent right back down all to the bottom right again. Down. Yeah, and then has to do it again, uh, and it's it's nuts. You'll you'll now get into a point in John Wick where they've they've done everything. They've done si uh, different settings, different times, different environments, different whatever. That now they're just starting to get to those really interesting almost like absurd in some points mm. realism like um the fight scene against uh there's like a big german guy i can't think of what his name is i think it's it's scott adkins character where he plays like this huge massively oversized like kingpin-esque character and and john wick has to fight him hand to hand and that's so interesting and yeah. now like five's coming out who is he going to fight next what kind of bizarre otherworldly character is going to be thought up for john wick to fight in in a most realistic style it's it's nuts and it's completely the other end of the spectrum to rrr but i think what you're saying there is sort of although it's not realistic that's what i like about fast and furious i like when they get more bigger scale and more ridiculous every time yeah and another big part of of the full guy um as well as the the fights realistic unrealistic there's a lot of car stunts that there's a big jump over a big gorge at the end mm -hmm. and so looking back a couple of examples of, of big car stunty films would be a big favorite of yours snooze fest fast and furious yeah, uh, and, really and a big favorite movies. of mine which would be uh mad max and the mad max stuff yes yeah i mean but i i do think both of them are i mean you, you act like um fast and furious is ridiculous because of how the cars aren't based in any reality, but neither is, neither is Mad Max. Like, they're both just... Obviously, cars can't achieve any of this, but they're just, for the <laughs> sake of the movie, they, they can. Like, yeah. Don Toretto's car just jumps. Uh, how does it do that? He just jumps over, it, over like, yeah. walls and stuff. However, Mad Max, if you want a chase scene, Fury Road is a, a, just a chase scene. The entire film yeah. is a chase scene. And you look at the older Mad Maxes, like Mad Max the original Mad Max, where he's the maddest of Maxes, and that's just filmed actual cars, actual locations, yeah, Australian just Outback. Some, just some roads in Australia. Just, yeah, there weren't stunt drivers. They just, like, paid a lorry driver to to but ram a bike. I think it looks really boring. I've seen the first half of Mad Max twice. Do you really? I've been trying to get into it, and I found it really dull. And people have said that the best action is the opening, mm. and that's, like, fine. The second think, one is is the best of the original three. Okay, because mm. I think it's it is kind of the case of, and sometimes it is just a case of movies where I think tastes just sort of um, we expect more from a movie. Yeah. In now, oh, because definitely. Because we can achieve it now, and they couldn't achieve it back then. And I think that's what it is with with the first Mad Max for me. I think it's just it, it doesn't hit the spot like it used to. 
And so what is it about the stunts in Fast and Furious that... Because of just how creative and ridiculous they are. Um, like, I when I rewatched 10 uh, a few days ago, a big bomb that's a ball... A giant ball that's a bomb rolling down the streets that then... that's going to blow up uh, Rome. And it, and it gets to a bridge and Dom Toretto is in his car and he sees a crane and he f- drives into the pavement and launches him into the air, knocks into the crane, it spins round the like h- counterweight on the other side, knocks into the ball and it goes into the into the water and then it explodes and it that flips all the cars, or oh, baddies, are, Dom lands on a street, baddies are chasing him. That explosion flips all those cars, but Dom outdrives it. I mean, that's crazy. That's an insane thing to ever comprehend. That's like something from a dream. But I like seeing that because I could never see that in real life because it would have to have luck turned to a, a million on like every yeah. setting of, of that <laughs> yeah. is just like i guess you could do it but it would be so so statistically impossible i love how you can see all these things that i otherwise wouldn't be able to and i think it it's i think fast and furious are a lot more tongue-in-cheek than people give them credit for uh, i think because they they act serious i think maybe the actors don't know or i think vin diesel does but vin diesel doesn't know i think he partly does because it's so the writers know and the directors know. And I think the fact that the actors always take them seriously, mostly. And I quite like that because it just seems like a parody, but it is a parody. I think people don't realise how mm. tongue cheek they are. They know how silly they are. I think you've just highlighted why I have a problem with them. I think for me, it's because they're so contrived. Like the, the way you just had to explain that stunt to me. Yeah too contrived it's not that it's like a car doing a big jump or anything like that i think it's just yeah because that'd be it's boring. just it, it's just too much whereas like fury road yeah it's yeah. it's just as bombastic but like it's not that contrived you can comprehend what's going on yeah but you can comprehend what's going on with that like i fury road's got like people on big poles like swinging from car to car like but like they're actually ridiculous. doing it like, I can see that and go, yeah, they're doing that. They are, yeah, that's true. I mean, there is a lot more CGI in Fury Road than people give it credit for. Oh, 100%. People always like, act like, there's like none. It's like, no, there's loads the, and loads and loads. But the, the car stunts are mostly real. That's that's the big thing yeah. about it. Not like but, the environments and the big storm and all that stuff. But the car stuff of, happening is the car stuff happening. That's generally the case in Fast and Furious, though. I mean, I, I don't care about the ones when it's not. As real like the ending of eight i never cared much for because that's like um there's like a submarine and there's like a, a, <laughs> a dodge charger they like made to be like running on ice and it's like well this is clearly just fake this isn't <laughs> and so that didn't interest me did you like the ending of fast and furious 6 because that was quite grounded well not really but like um when they're fighting on the plane as it's like taking off going down a runway that's Someone calculated it's like 24 miles long. Oh and my god, yeah, longest runway in the world. Yeah, and no, then, um, I, I just can't get behind any of them. Because that I was, just a, can't apart do from it. being such a long runway, that was a bit more grounded. Where Vin Diesel was like a off. flying headbutt to, to knock someone out, didn't he? Yeah. Gal Gadot falls <laughs> off and then she's alive in the ninth one, which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but that's, that's fair. I understand why you like them, like the energy behind it. Um, yeah, it's just escapism for me. We've fair. talked about that. So I think this leads on to like CGI in action and how it ruins it okay because look at the mcu so obviously Mm. all of those movies have extensive action scenes and they will end with a big action scene and they are are, they're just endless cgi the the actors aren't even there the vast majority of the time they'll be digi doubles often they'll you know if they've got a helmet they'll put that on and they're suddenly not in the scene anymore um and i think it sucks i think Every single Marvel movie, I like Marvel movies, but I think every single one of them, my, the part I am least interested in is the final act. Um, oh, definitely, yeah. And there's a reason why, I mean, how many years has it been since The Winter Soldier? You still have directors coming out saying this is the next Winter Soldier. Be- I because actually the, think the, the Winter Soldier the, is one of my least favourite, but I can see really? the, the action's good. I can see the appeal with, with the groundedness yeah. of the action. I just think it's boring, but... Uh, it is you're completely right they do keep saying this is the next winter soldier because it's that's the only one with like competent stunt direction competent stunt direction and yeah like this there's, there's cg everywhere there's cg in cinema everywhere these days but um the fights were happening and and you can understand the stakes and yeah. it wasn't contrived um and then you look at something like the climax of the eternals 
and it's just it's just utter madness uh i mentioned this in our review of the fall guy no it was before that when we were talking about the new superman costume how in eternals their cre- their suits have like creases yeah because they're actually wearing costumes it's not like the ending of spider-man see i oh. love the ending of no way home because of the stakes of i've got to know these characters but it was just entirely cgi entirely cgi and you look back at um spider-man one spider-man and, and the goblin all those bits yeah, yeah again like there is cg you can't have a real goblin f- like flying on a glider yeah but there's, there's, there's less work. reliance on it there's yeah. a lot of wire work and the costume's real yeah. and they're actually there in person yeah. like it, it's not the same if willem dafoe isn't there and gives the old god speed spider-man like mm. it's just it doesn't hit the same no. um I do, has has tom holland ever worn the suit maybe in the first one he wears but now it's just set, like it? the black and white body no, suit, no, especially he, the iron spider i mean he does wear he does wear a suit on set but they just digitally replace it yeah, which is crazy because it looks so much worse. Whenever you see like BTS mm. of them before and after, before you see like creases in the armpits and stuff, and you're like, oh, okay, so this is a suit, this is a costume that yeah. someone is wearing. And then they're so, so tight to his body. It doesn't yeah. make sense. I mean, you'd see like his underwear underneath and stuff, but you don't. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't yeah. make, it doesn't look in any way realistic. Even um, the stunts, you watch the behind the scenes and uh i saw one from no way home so this is when he's wearing his iron spider suit and tom holland has like the the black and white headband on and the black and white body suit that's then replaced with the iron spider yeah and tom holland i think one of the reasons why he won the part in the first place is because he does gymnastics yeah and you see him doing gymnastics like jumping off trampolines and flipping and jumping on cars and stuff but then when you see it in in the film and he's all just cg there's, I know exactly. There's I've no seen that BTS where he's yeah on the like, highway well, with the cars at the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Home. yeah. Like, why, why is he doing this then? Because it doesn't look real. Yeah. Get I mean, him it, in a suit and just let him moments. do it in camera. Well, there are a couple of moments in the movies where you see Tom Holland do like a flip when he's just as Peter Parker in his normal clothes, which is good. But yeah, no, it is a shame because you see that there's that interview, not the interview, the his audition where you see him and Chris Evans do a scene and he just flips in and Chris Evans is like, whoa, whoa. Like, because he didn't think he <laughs> they'd cast someone who could actually do that. Um, but no, I I get where you're coming from. I think there's way too much CGI. I mean, we we've talked about it before, but the um, the climax of Black Panther is one of the absolute worst. Like that movie oh, is yeah. is good, and people liked it so much because it's almost out. It's more than a Marvel movie. It's got like so, um, political. It's got social commentary. It's yeah. it's a drama. It's got and something then, to say, and it's completely ruined whenever it becomes an MCU movie. Whenever they put yeah. shit jokes in, when it turns into they, the third act, when and it's just really bad CGI. Um, and okay, so going from this, we agree that CGI action doesn't really work mm. um, because I think everyone is on the same page with that. Now a new thing. Have you seen? There's a YouTube series called. Um, no cgi is actually just invisible cgi there's four parts yeah it's so interesting and it's about how basically um the marketing of a movie they know that people don't like cgi in action they know it ruins it and so now they just the directors and the actors are told a script to say and which is basically like there's no cgi everything's real and that happens in in the press for every movie and it's always bullshit and (laughs) this video is just a guy showing the vfx breakdowns and showing like look there's insane about cgi there's things that is cgi that doesn't need to be cgi look at this and yet you're claiming there's none it's a complete lie Uh, even like top gun maverick was a big one they i remember back when when it was nominated for best visual effects they didn't release a VFX reel because they wanted it to people to think it was still in the cinemas and they wanted people to think it was real because all their whole thing, which I fell for too, was them saying all of the shots are real, all of the plane yeah. shots. They didn't release a VFX reel. So I remember at the Oscars when they showed, but you know, before the categories, they showed like a little bit of the behind the scenes. Yeah, like yeah They didn't yeah. do it for that. They just showed the trailer. So that's one of the biggest culprits recently of like, they say all of the plane stuff's real. It's not. It's entirely no. CGI. It's entirely CGI. Like <laughs> they had some planes, but they re- they had they had planes uh, with like tracking dots on, and they replaced them with CGI planes. And like there might be a shot where like loads of planes are flying. There was like a yeah. really famous one where they a few of them flying around. They've got big like sonic boom blasts behind them. Whatever. Mm. There was one plane there, and then they put others with CGI. And 
it's just it's so 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 not real and but they're just playing off people wanting to see real stuff but it not being possible to film so they just lie and that's the trait that's something new about hollywood that i hate and on that note anyone at home listening any uh big producers or execs who want to give us spider-man 4 we will do spider-man 4 and we'll make it good i'd love give to us spider-man, spider-man 4. 4 yeah proper like street level stuff uh, an actual I'll give costume them a proper suit yeah yeah wire works good villain i'm up for that yeah i think that was a good good rundown a, a brief kind of look at um action. stunts and action and and cgi yeah um let us know below uh any other examples good or bad i think stakes have to be at their top and high like stakes emo- uh, emotional stakes and yes. like character stakes um we need cgi at the bottom like little low minimal, cgi little as possible in camera yeah um we want uh doubles as little as possible we want to see the face of the hero we want to know it's them mm. we want yep. a few cuts as possible we want to see the whole thing and that's and i want it to be creative and interesting and new because i i think that big car jump at the end of fall guy i was like whoa that's impressive but i also felt like i've seen a lot of car jumps before in my life that's action movies <laughs> that's action movies Wow. Well, that's the episode for this week. What a long one. So we're not going to do any double features or, or polls or anything. Um, but I think I think this has broken the video game curse, you know, this film. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's done really well. Um, I know people were saying that The Last of Us did, but the fact that they've turned the full guys into a film and, and it's good and they've got big stars. I know it's not too accurate to the games, but yeah. still, I think it's great. Well done. Well done. What's next week? I don't think we know, do we? No, because it's Planet of the Apes, and I don't really want to watch Planet of the Apes. I don't either. Thank you for joining us. I think I'm. I can see. I think I'm quite close to landing now. Yeah, I hope you're not too much longer. I know you have. You have a couple of bits to do today. I've got stuff I need to do. I can see the fields are getting bigger and bigger. I'm starting to make out all the cars and the roads. Uh, I think I'll be landing quite shortly. Is it going to be like a, a soft landing or more of a splat? Like, will we will we ever see you again? Uh, I'm. I'm just going to have to check and see if I've packed my parachute. Um, it might be my hand luggage. I'm gonna have a look. Have you got? So have you got your hand luggage with you? I've got it with me. Yeah, but I can't remember if I packed my parachute or not. <laughs> Classic Matt, never packing his parachute to a plane. We'll find out if we, we might have next episode next week. Okay, bye. Have to. See you on the um, next one. See you on the da. <laughs> there he goes. Oh, me not. I didn't have my parachute. I just splattered <laughs> onto the ground. <laughs> That's great. That's great physical comedy. That is. <laughs>